Bradford. Nicholas, let's talk about fixing your over the top move that's causing your slice and your pull draws and a bunch of lousy shots, shall we? So we're not sword fighting. No, we can put these down for now. Well, you can, yeah. I'm gonna hold mine. So first, uh, let's define over the top. We'll start there. And then we'll talk about why it does cause your slices and your pull draws, uh, how to fix that, including a lot of talk about just how to set up to the ball and how you're gonna move your lead arm throughout the whole swing. You ready for that? I know that's gonna be groundbreaking for you. I can't, mm -hmm. wait. can't wait to hear your thoughts. Uh, and then how it even moves into your follow through and how you bend your wrists and how that has something to do with over the top and how to get better at this. And then lastly, we'll talk about how to practice. So zero to four degrees of swing direction is pretty good. Those who suffer from that over the top nonsense uh, probably swing 10 degrees to the left on average, if you want to throw that out there. So there's a big discrepancy into how to correct that. I think we can show you how to do that here at the end really fast, so pay attention to that one. Good? I'm ready. Can we start? You sure you're ready? Tell you don't me, look ready. Tell me what to do. All right, so first, uh, let's define over the top. Okay. Over the top of what, Brad? You, you got, have no you, idea you got I was going to ask you. No. <laughs> Some kind of imaginary plane it is my really guess. It really is, yes, this fancy plane word. So let's look at a couple swings I had you make here so we can start. I'll draw a couple of lines just because I think these are uh, similar to what people are thinking about when they talk about over the top. First, I'll just draw one that goes up your shaft, and I'll draw one that I think from this angle is going to go through about where the top of your elbow would be, something like that. When most people think of over the top, my perception is that they feel on the way down, like here where your lead arm's parallel to the ground, that the shaft of the club at this point in time is going to be tracing this red arrow, which is well above both of those lines, in particular that one I drew over your, your elbow or your turned shoulder at this point in time. I also made, had you make another one that I thought was, uh, I said, dude, even worse than that. So let's check out that one. But I feel like that's what people are describing is over the top. It's on the downswing. And it also has to do with just the position of the butt end of the club or the shaft or however it is you want to define that. So this one you did even more. When your lead arm was parallel to the ground, a simple way that we like to talk about these is where the shaft at this point in time bisects your head. And you can see how that one goes through your ear. This one goes through the top of your neck. Yep. One being worse than the other. One is really bad, the one on the left. The one on the right, that's atrocious. Oh, gotcha. And that's what people who are watching this, probably how you are battling your golf game right now if that's your swing. Now, I think where people describe over the top poorly is that uh, they don't really have a definition of what is over the top and where is it, like that outline. But then also, where do you want this thing? Mm -hmm. And then how do I know how bad my problem is? A little bit of that can be done with that measuring you just talked about. So when your lead arm's parallel to the ground on the way down, however far away that is from you, will help you choose that bisection point, whether it's your neck or your ear. Both of those are terrible. You've got to, if you want to hit this ball straight, at least get the shaft of the club closer to, I'll draw just a green line in here. This is your line of demarcation, I suppose, on OK. It's got to be below that green line, which is below your shoulder, your trail shoulder. And ideally, if you're going to hit nothing but just little draws, it would go through the middle of your arm. You want to see someone who does that? Should we do that? You're pulling that picture of me up? Nope, nope. definitely not going to pull up a picture of you. Let's pull up a picture of Colin Morikawa, though. And we'll start right at the top of the swing, and we'll get down to where his lead arm's parallel to the ground. And out of the arrows that you've got drawn on you, let's compare those to where Colin is. And here you can already see the bottom of the club is under his shoulder. And when his arm is pretty close to parallel to the ground here, he has the shaft passing through the middle-ish, top-ish of his bicep. So I'm talking about that as right here on Brad's arm. If you went lower, you'd be getting closer to the middle of his bicep. The shoulder's too high, but that maybe will work. And if you're really over the top, that's a good place to start. You never want the shaft going through your neck Wham. or your ear Wham. or the top of your head. We see all of those things in here. This is really the biggest problem I see uh, amateur golfers have on the downswing. You yeah, and I would like say this is fair. This is probably being fixed in 9 out of 10 slicing lessons. You got it. So we can go through our whole tour player database of uh, PGA Tour players that have the shaft always below their shoulder. What this is really a problem is that uh, the rest of your swing is set up to hit across the ball. So at this point in time, uh, we, you can speak very specifically towards your swing path. We're going to talk about that here using our quad, how when you hit across the ball, those were 10 degrees out to mm -hmm. in. Um, you can measure that right at impact, but you can also go backward. That's why this picture is so good. It's projecting 
um, and trying to anticipate what's going to happen from here is what I'm doing in these images. Yeah, so you're saying then from the image of me in the left, I'm going to have a really hard time moving that swing direction into out from where I am on that one, especially on the second right. one as well. So, so Colin, at this point in time, has his swing direction, because I know this from his shots, his swing direction is almost zero. He doesn't mm. really swing into out or out to in too much on most of his shots. Meanwhile, with you having the shaft higher than that, your swing direction at this point in time is programmed 10 degrees to the left. Doesn't mean that's how you're going to hit it, but that's the problem. Yep. You have a serious issue right there. So there are ways to overcome that, but they're just not good ones. They're not PGA Tour-like moves that you make from this point in time. So this is the start of slicing, hitting across the ball. But you can also, if you have the club face closed enough, maybe you can demonstrate that one. So if you go over the top on the way down, since we're picking over the top is just a terrible phrase, like uh, what else comes to mind for over the top that you hear a lot? It's um, like casting maybe is maybe a casting. word, but... Uh, yeah, over the top is the most popular one. It that really is. It's just whether like, people, like I said, know what it means or not, but it's yeah. one that definitely gets thrown out there. And I think people are just saying it's over the top of that top yellow line. Yeah, it's kind of that imaginary shaft plane probably. You got it. So now on the way down, as Brad gets closer to the ball, you've got two choices here. You can still have the shaft too far out, and your over the top is just continuing to be a problem. Your 10 degree leftward swing direction is still in play right here. And golfers either, either have the face open enough where the ball can start on just a, uh, pretty much at your target and curve to the right. You can have it a little bit more closed and you've got a chance of maybe pulling before it cuts. Or there are a lot of people who get the club face, not necessarily here, but when they hit the ball, they don't have the shaft forward enough and the face angle's too closed. And then that can be the pull draw shot that you hit. So all of those lead from having your swing direction on the way down when your lead arm's parallel to the ground, it's too far out away from you. Sound about right? Yep. How, what percentage of the slicers you come in, or that you see, uh, that come in to help, or for help with you, have this problem? I mean, I said nine out of 10, it's probably 10 out of it's, 10 though. It's 11 out of 10, okay. there's the answer. <laughs> so let's talk about ways you can stop doing this. I think we uh, talked about that enough about how it works. So a couple things you can do are just to address, and Brad I think is gonna cover these pretty well, but if you suffer from slicing over the top pull draws, a whole host of uh, inconsistent contact or, sorry, shot pattern that really starts with curving the ball to the right for you. The first thing I'd always recommend someone do is put something by the golf ball. Uh, and then can you demonstrate five and six again of yep. the uh, swing direction just being too far to the left? So if the butt end of the club's too far out, shaft's going through his, sh his neck. Now the shaft is too far out away from him at this point. At this point, you'd want to have this for a straight swing direction like Colin did. Let me go ahead and show you that. And then you're going to copy this exact same thing, Brad. So when the shaft's parallel to the ground, you notice that image up there and how the sweet spot of the club is ever so slightly to the left or inwards of his hands, even a little more in line than that. That's where Colin's at to have a straight swing direction when the shaft's parallel to the ground. Uh, if you're going to have that swing direction problem on the way down like uh, Brad does on that left picture, you'll have the sweet spot further out. You're ready to slice across this ball. One good way to know it is that you've got an obstacle right here and you can recognize Brad making a bunch of noise, slamming into it, and there are a few little jabs in this already from people smashing into it. So I've got this angle. So no, you're not alone. That's true. So I've got this one angled where the, the Foresight launch monitor can still see the ball. So the foam noodle's almost up to the end and it's slightly angled inward, maybe like five or six degrees. So if Brad's swing direction is straight, he'll never hit that. So once you've got the, the uh, pool noodle on the ground, let's talk about a dress. Yep. And then we're gonna get to why I've got this big wide diameter noodle here and how I'm gonna hit you in the face with it. All right, so at a dress, what are the types of things you're trying to do to alleviate that leftward picture up there? So things you can do to dress would be just to try to set your swing direction more right to begin with. And that can be as simple as just uh, aiming your hips more to the right, feeling you're aiming your shoulders more to the right. Uh, you know, again, normally we have that pool noodle angled a little to the right, so it's trying to almost match them to that. So that could be a path guide as well as some alignment aids. So what about your stance? Are you moving that around at all? I'm typically at least trying to start with aiming the stance pretty straight yeah. to begin with, so I'm not trying to, no. you know, stagger my feet. So aiming the stance pretty straight, aim your knee line, your hip line, shoulder line more to the right. You may even feel like you're to look at the target, like you even have to look over your shoulder. Okay. Um, that'd be a good way to practice it. And then as you do that, even feeling like you're aiming your left elbow more and more to the right. Uh, that can help you with your grip for one, but uh, more than anything is really just helping to set your swing direction you know, more to the right, more in doubt. Yep, that's good for you. Nice job.
Okay, I could do something on this. So, yeah. so why don't you just, uh, there's one I've heard before. Uh, people swing too far to the left, just aim your stance to the right. What do you see as a problem with that? Uh, just aiming your stance to the right can complicate you know, a couple of different things as far as then uh, where you have to aim the face on different clubs, I would say, depending on the clubs you're hitting. You got that. And then, uh, yeah, so let's uh, imagine this is your problem. Uh, demonstrate your five again with the, your arm yep. too far out. Too far out. Too far out. Good. Okay. And then the six, same thing. So now the shaft of the club and the sweet spot are too far out away from Brad. That's certainly not in line like you see the Colin Morikawa here. So Brad's ability at this point in time to move the club head into the ball is uh, he's really compromising how fast he can swing because now he can't really straighten his right arm too much more. It just pushes the club out more. And as he straightens his right arm, he's not actually swinging the club towards me anymore. It's going back towards him. That's the slowest way to play. So if you're just going to keep doing that and aim your swing more to the right, you're still destined to hit these pull draws and slicing shots. Yeah. You're just starting in a different direction. And ultimately, you're never really fixing the problem anyway. This is a swing problem. This is not just aim further to the right problem. Seem right? Yeah, and I'd say the people that uh, tend to try to use that rationale, it almost makes their problem worse many times. It does. So. It's not actually fixing your problem. Yeah. Not so only they swing slow, but they tend to slice more. <laughs> it's weird, right? All right, so set up to this one. You talked about looking over your left shoulder, yep. your shoulder more. Uh, yeah, so aiming this elbow more to the right of the target, so it's going to help you to turn the grip, but it's again just going to continue to set your swing direction more to the right. As crazy as that is, and it's hard maybe to see with my pullover on when you, uh, the crease in my elbow where I'd flex my bicep, when you, if you, the more you can start to turn that where it's perpendicular to the target where you want to go, uh, the more likely you are to turn your hand on the club more, your lead hand, turn it stronger or just more to the right in the back or at address. Uh, which also helps you swing it out, but it's really making it more challenging on the way down to start to turn your wrist as much and supinate your whole forearm on the way down to ultimately make your swing direction go more to the left. So it doesn't mean you're not going to still have this swing direction problem on the downswing like you're demonstrating there or over the top, but it's certainly making it harder to do that. So I'm helping the club face and there's some path help in there too. You got it. All right, so set up to this and let's talk about this big noodle here. So a lot of different things I can do with this. First, these are awesome to teach golf with because I really never get, need to get near Brad, which is always a good idea. Uh, but while he's swinging, I'm not really threatened to get hit. A lot of people can teach with a golf shaft as well, and you can do this. Now you're just getting a little bit more in the danger zone where there's really no need to do it. So what I can do with this pool noodle is represent the angle that I really want Brad to swing on on the way back with his lead arm. So when it's parallel to the ground, so just go to three. Got it. He's going to miss that on the way back. He'll go all the way up to the top and not hit it still. And then on the way down, he's going to miss it one more time. So I'm not holding that level to the ground. That would make it uh, pretty easy to get underneath it. But I'm also not holding it vertical as well. It's built on that same sort of angle that he's actually going to move his lead arm on. So if you have this up, go ahead and set up one more time so you can see this down the camera. I've got this just a few inches away from his shoulder, maybe about six. The end of the pool noodle isn't up super high where he can hit it anyway. It just ends right at his shoulder. And then on the way back and down, he's just going to miss this. And then we've done this millions of times. If you've watched any of our other videos, you can see Brad not hitting big slices like that. But maybe let's do one video so that there's a uh, shot to take a look at this one. Okay. So just do like your normal-ish normal, normal -ish swing. If you want to swing a few degrees to the right, that's fine. But okay. just miss this with your arm. Okay. Let's take a look at that one. So I'm in no danger of getting hit. We'll load up Brad's initial swing, and we'll do the same thing here. And we're probably just going to need to start with no lines. And let's just go to where his lead arm's parallel to the ground. Here's where the butt under the club and his shaft come together to pass right through his neck. And you know that that's a big no-no. Here's the one we just did. You'll notice on the way back how the shaft is going through closer to the bottom of his bicep. He does this really well every time. On the way down, I would always tell people when the shaft's parallel to the ground to actually have the shaft at this point in time, so his lead arm parallel to the ground, actually have it slightly above where it went back. So in a way, I'm kind of teaching people to come over the top every time anyway. It's all your fault. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, huh? No, that's, uh, the point isn't necessarily where you went back and where you came down. It's where you come down. And you can see the difference in the angle of the shaft there. So now when the shaft's parallel, like we talked about with Colin, You'll see where the club head is. And even though this is really blurry, mainly because of all the studio lights, 
sweet spot of the club is somewhere in here. And let's do the same thing in your problem shot. And you can see how much yeah, further out way up there. that really is away from you. That's over the top. That's how to stop doing it. Now, another one that, uh, that helps and get this noodle out of the way. This is to talk a little bit about the follow through and even maybe the downswing and how you want to move yourself around. So backswing and downswing, miss the noodle. On the way through though, Brad, let's do like a, a demo here, just how you'd get to where the shaft's parallel to the ground on this side. Now you notice from that view how Brad's shoulders are tilted to the right. His left one is lower than his right. When you tend to have that over the top problem that I've just found out I'm teaching everyone anyway, see a lot more of the right shoulder much higher uh, than where Brad just demonstrated in a pretty level. It'd be rare to see someone who's got their right shoulder higher than their left. That would make it almost impossible to actually hit little draws, but that's a tougher one to see. And then do that same demo, but hit like towards me. So uh, uh, the wrist bends are more, more easily seen. Notice how his right wrist is really very straight relative to the shaft. That's uh, when he starts to bend his wrist down, that's ulnar deviation. What he's trying to do is almost like max that out coming through the ball, keeping his shoulders tilted to the right. If he has his uh, lead arm in on the downswing like he did on that one, we kind of have the recipe to how to do it. So let's hit one. Um, and to start with, I'll angle this pool noodle a touch more. And the idea here is now, how do you, how do you actually do this? How do you put this into practice? So let's start throw up the driving range here one more yep. time. That last one didn't slice. Nicely done. Those are great shots. So we're going to practice how this works. I've got, uh, just as an example, I've got Brad's swing path. 21.2 degrees in to out on that last demonstration. That's way too much. But that's the opposite of someone who would hit the pull draw or the slicing shot from that over the top move. So let's practice how you would do this. I've got this set up as a number nine at one of my favorite courses in Illinois, Butterfield Country Club, heading back towards the, the uh, uh, clubhouse there. I want to practice getting that path number to eight degrees into out, so not nearly as extreme as what you did before. So let's hit one of these, eight degrees into out, that long punch shot follow through, so it doesn't even have to be a full hit. Ready when you are. You done? Yeah, I think so. Are you done? You need a lot of instruction. I know. That club face was very close, Brad. But hey, let's see what slicing is not my problem. <laughs> let's see how that one works. So the point of this hitting is not actually to hit a good shot. It's to train your ability with the launch monitor to swing eight degrees into out. Then we'll get down to what you actually want, which is probably closer in that two to four range. I like anything between zero and four degrees into out. So into out is what I'm describing as this way, to uh, out away from Brad to the right of where he's actually aiming it. Uh, let's see, you got a three degree pull and 16 degrees into out on that one. So at this point in time, I wouldn't have to worry about Brad and you wouldn't worry about this either. If you swung 16 degrees into out, you don't have this uh, over the top problem. So let's take away some of the training wheels now. Let's dial this one in. So uh, instead of 16 degrees into out, to get it back to eight, you would do less of the hips closed, less of your elbow facing over here into the screen. And on the backswing and downswing, you don't have to feel like it's moving as far in. You teach me how to do the club face, but that's let's see how the path is. still a big one. I bet that's still over 10. Yeah, it's only five. Five and a half? All yep. right. You're down the path, great. Sure that face I need to take care of this really part. Really close to the target. Okay. Uh, so there's a five. Now let's straighten this one out even a touch more. I know you're good at this path control. I can tell that. So if, if you could practice and you kept hitting eight, I'd say if you, you go from the over the top problem to always swinging eight degrees in and out, and you can do that, say, seven, eight, nine, ten times in a row, you have got your problem licked. At that point in time, now it's just uh, moving your swing direction back to that tighter window of two to four degrees in and out, and you're there. You're, you're playing golf. The worst way to actually try to improve your your slicing or over the top problem would be to swing 10 degrees out to in, make the next swing nine degrees out to in, the next one eight, the next one 10, and just sort of go slow on that. I'm a bigger fan of move 10 degrees out to in and then the next swing will make you swing 10 degrees into out and then we'll nudge it back the other way. So those extremes are important. This one you're gonna get pretty close to zero. Mm -hmm. Zero on the path? Sure. Okay. Can't promise zero, you much on the face. To see what zero, can one into out. That was really closed. All right. They always are. And we got a three. Down to three. There's where you just want to kind of live all the time. Really nice demo of how to just change your shoulders and address and 
a little bit of the feel of your lead arm on how you can change that swing direction. So let's do one more of those 20 into, into out. Okay. I'm actually just thinking eight to 10 is enough. So what you do at address to make that work. Do I do the most? Uh, not even the most, so a little less eight, than eight the most. Ten? Yeah, right. eight to 10. And then I'll keep this up just so that you've got a, an obstacle as a way to view, visualize that one and do your thing. Eight to 10 to the right. That one's a lot. They're all be closer drawn. to that 16. So at this point, 9.7. 9.7, that's pretty good. That'd be really Why good. does it say 19? That'd be really good on the prices, right? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, good point. That's a pretty good demo about how not to come over the top. It's a horrible demo about how to hook too much, but for another day. Hey. That's all you got, huh? No. Hey. I, I, have, no, I have no defense <laughs> on that one. That's all right. The good so, news is I know where the ball's going to go. It's that, not right. That's true. That's such a valuable piece of information. People who are over the top rarely hit more than one shot out of 10 that pull draw like that. They're usually all slices. So I hope you enjoyed this video about stopping your over the top swing. And honestly, if I was going to give you some more advice, stop saying over the top. It's just a silly dogmatic phrase that has very little meaning without some context. Talk about where your lead arm is and where that shaft bisects you as a person. That's your, your ticket to playing better. So if you did enjoy this video, click the thumbs up and don't forget to join the Golf Tech community for some exclusive content, some offers, and to book a lesson or a club fitting. Check out the link below to create a free Golf Tech account. Brad, thanks as always for being such an amazing pull drawer. Until next time, maybe I'll push one. Hey, thanks. Mm -hmm.